Good morning. I want you to imagine a 14-year-old girl. Her name's Molly Russell. Uh, Molly was a very bright, creative, and curious teenager out of the UK. In 2017, her life was tragically cut short. She took her own life after being exposed to disturbing content about suicide and self-harm on social media. Now, her story, it's been covered pretty extensively by the media. Uh, some of you might have heard about it. But it's really a stark reminder for us about the hidden dangers that are lurking out of the digital world for our kids. Now, Molly's parents, they're fairly devastated. Uh, they were left alone to grapple with the sadness. And really, the question they had is, how could this have happened? I'm Hari Ravi Chandran. I'm the CEO and founder of Aura. Seven years ago, I started Aura with a simple but very profound mission. We wanted to make the internet safer. Since 2017, we've grown into one of the fastest growing family safety solutions for families. But I'm a father of four, and I know our work here is just getting started. One of the things we realized is technology has gotten embedded into every aspect of our life, especially in the lives of kids. Kids that are between 8 and 18 at this point spend 7.5 hours on their devices every single day. So if you think about that, that's half of the waking time our kids are on their devices. So to me, this signifies not just a stat, it's not a statistic, it's a real seismic shift that's happening about how um, humans and especially kids are consuming content and devices and, and time online. Now the one thing that's very clear is that this shift has had a lot of impact, and a lot of the, the, the issues from the impacts are pretty undeniable. Whether it's sleep deprivation, we have reduced physical activity, and a lot of worsening mental health conditions, which we'll hear a lot about today, it's become the norm now. It's not the exception to the norm. And a lot of this happens with the relentless pressure that kids feel. They feel very much like they have to be perfect. There's a constant comparison element that's happening day by day. And a lot of times they feel like they're just not good enough. And that's what they face every single day as they go through their lives. Now I want to share a story that's very personal uh, to me. Like I said, I'm a dad of uh, four. And one of my kids actually has faced uh, a lot of these struggles. So we've seen this and witnessed it firsthand. Uh, my, uh, one of our kids battled self-harm, depression, eating disorder. And we were watching from the sidelines and it was very clear to us that the digital pressures that came with uh, a lot of her life really amplified these conditions. So it was something that, that was much more, uh, much more negative as a result of a lot of the time online. Now watching our kids suffer is probably the most humbling and I would say one of the most difficult decisions that we've had to face as a family. Uh, I know some of you here and some of you have talked to me about your own challenges and again, as I said, it's not, it's not an exception. This is sort of the norm. And as we were trying to help her, we were looking for resources. We wanted to know, are we alone in this? What are other families doing? How, do, how does somebody navigate uh, this set of issues? And we spent a lot of time on it, did not find tools, resources, really a community that we could embrace. And we said, okay, well, this is a big problem and there's no solution for it. Let's just go build it. And so that's what we did. So we're very excited, we're very proud to announce the launch of digitalparenthood.com, which is a site, it's, it's a website, but it's not just a website. It's what we think of as a lifeline for families. We have some incredible partners. We have the Boston Children's Hospital, Common Sense Media, the Joan Gans Cooney Center at the Sesame Workshop, and many other partners that have helped us with this initiative. Uh, it's available with a lot of free resources, a lot of expert advice, a community support, being able to interact with others and be able to help families that are a lot like ours, are struggling with a lot of these issues. So it's really about empowering parents to raise a connected generation in a safe and nurturing environment. But these issues, they're, they're very complicated. They're not, they're not simple, it's not a single factor. So we need a broad approach to this whole uh, uh, set of issues and something that's comprehensive for online safety and security for kids. 
So that's why we're all here today. Uh, we feel that we can take on these issues uh, by learning and listening to a lot of experts we brought together for the course of the day today. We have folks from medicine, child psychology, education, advocacy, and we're gonna dive deep into a lot of these complex issues that we're all facing as, as a society. Our goal here today is to equip you with the tools, the knowledge, and what you need to be able to raise kids in a safe and nurturing environment. We've put together, I think, a great program, um, and thank you for everyone that's, uh, that's been involved with that. And it's also my great pleasure to now introduce our first set of guests. Uh, we have Poppy Harlow here. Many of you know her from her many years at CNN. She's now an independent journalist, and she's also a mother. And we also have Dr. Becky Kennedy, who's a clinical psychologist and a best-selling author. Uh, many know her as the parenting whisperer. She's also here with us to talk about these issues. Uh, they'll kick off the conversation with uh, talking about a connected generation, really exploring a lot of the key challenges and what the guiding principles need to be as we embrace and navigate our way through this very complex terrain of uh, digital parenting. So thank you all for being here. We think that today is a small step in uh, helping us set up a better uh, digital world for our kids. Let's get started. <laughs> 